West Virginia took up residency in the nation's top 20 and refused to move out. The 1982 season was capped off with a Gator Bowl bid. And in 1983, there was a 9-3 record and a Hall of Fame Bowl championship. But there was still one hurdle to overcome. One more test for Neyland and his Mountaineers. Penn State. Penn State has been a thorn in our side for a long time. And our kids felt we were good. And we felt this was our year to get a little bit of respect back, so to speak. For 29 years, the Penn State game had been West Virginia's worst nightmare. But all that was about to change. The Mountaineer defense took control early on as the game turned into a brutal battle, with both sides struggling to gain the edge. Fullback Ron Wolfley put West Virginia on top 7 to nothing. But when D.J. Dozier burst through the line and rumbled into the end zone, ghosts of seasons past began to haunt the Mountaineers. Finally, in the fourth quarter, place kicker Paul Woodside put West Virginia back on top with a 49-yard field goal. Penn State came charging back only to have the Mountaineer defense take the ball away and allow halfback Pat Randolph to write a brand new chapter of Mountaineer history. And the handoff given to Randolph with blocker, swings out to the right, cuts down over the 20 to 15, and 10 to 5, touchdown West Virginia, go Pat Scott Barrows with a ball. This was it. The 17-14 victory over Penn State was the biggest win in Mountaineer field history. The Mountaineers had arrived. West Virginia football was second to none. This team is going to work at being crazy today. On the field. Great teams are made up of great players. And in Don Nealon's early years, he had some of the best players in America wearing the gold and blue. Everybody understand that? Linebacker Darrell Talley, number 90, put fear in the hearts of opponents with his all-out passion for punishment. I just wanted to run. I just wanted to run and tackle and prove to the guy across in front of me that he could not beat me. I would not let the guy in front of me beat me. I refuse to be beaten. If I'm beaten one play, I'm coming back the next play twice as hard because I don't think there's anybody that can beat me consistently. And that's where I think is the mark of a good football player, refusing to quit. In 1982, Darrell Talley became the first consensus All-American from West Virginia since Bruce Bosley. However, just three years later, the Mountaineers had another consensus choice for All-American. Number 77, offensive lineman Brian Joswiak. During his junior season, Joswiak checked in at 6'5", 290 pounds, and could bench press 480. He was clearly the best collegiate offensive lineman in America. I think my strength was my strength. I was by no means a finesse player. I didn't have the moves. I had a couple techniques, but because I was so strong, I overpowered a lot of guys. I hate using the word cocky, but that's what happens. When you step on the field, uh, you, you change. You know, and you become an individual that knows nobody can beat. And uh, that's a, a great asset to have. A great asset for any team is its kicking game. And for four years, the Mountaineers were blessed with one of the finest kickers in the nation, All-American Paul Woodside. Paul Woodside, the first time I met him, handed me a card and it said, I am a stutterer. Please bear with me and he could hardly talk to me. And I remember going out in the field, he was a walk-on for us, and he kicked that ball right straight down through the middle from 40, 45 yards out, and I, I told Donnie Young, we've had a great recruiting year on a guy I've never even seen or heard of before. Four years later, this guy had become one of the greatest kickers in NCAA history, and he was just a scream. Our team loved Paul Woodside probably one of the most contagious football players 
we've ever had on this team. He was a very, very special guy. For the Mountaineers, the 1985 and 86 seasons were filled with frustration. While a punishing defense had become a West Virginia trademark, the offense at times seemed to be missing a spark. We needed a quarterback, and a young freshman came in by the name of Major Harris. And all of a sudden, we looked around, and uh, we saw this guy had some magic about him. Uh, I also had him in camp in between his junior and senior year. And at seven o'clock at night, we would always play touch tap, and nobody could touch him. And I said, if they can't touch him, I know they're gonna have trouble tackling him. he was different. You knew there was a, something about him that set him apart from normal athletes. Sometimes you weren't sure what it was, but you knew there was something special about him. Was he, this guy could be a running back. He could be a wide receiver. He could be a quarterback. He'd make so many amazing plays or things that you didn't think a human being could do, twist, turn. And I've never seen someone that could do the things he could do on a football field. You know, I, I don't think I ever will. And we watched it on films, and our coaches would just say, watch this. You know, they were amazed. The amazing freshman put the magic back in the Mountaineers' offense. Over the final seven games of the 87 season, West Virginia averaged more than 35 points per game. Players, fans, and coaches all could feel the momentum building. Every player on my team in 1987 felt they should have been 11 and 0. They never felt one team was really better than us, and they were all back. Everybody on the team, I thought they fitted perfect together because, you know, we had an experienced offensive line, experienced receivers, we had a great defense. I just thought, you know, we was a team. Our goal, we, we created a triangle, a pyramid for our goals, and at the top was win. Bottom line was win. We just want to win whatever it takes. Mountaineers charged into the 88 season like a team on a mission. They would not simply beat other teams, they would crush them. Defensively, they destroyed their opposition with co-captains Robert Pickett and Bo Orlando leading the attack. On the other side of the ball, five fifth-year seniors on the offensive line completely dominated the line of scrimmage. They opened huge holes for Major and company to gallop through on their way to scoring a stunning 43 points per game. And every time we walked down the field that year, you know, we knew that if we did what we had to do, it was, no one was gonna beat us. I mean, that was our goal every game, not just to beat people, it was to crush them. West Virginia's big challenge in 88 is supposed to have come from Penn State. Joe Paterno and his Nittany Lions rolled into Morgantown for a scheduled showdown to help determine the beast of the East. Instead, it turned out to be an all-out massacre. I kind of felt early in the game that things were going our way because we had sent in a play, 29 stick, which is an option to the left. Well, Major called 29 stick in the huddle, and the entire team ran 29 stick, but he ran 28 stick, which means the entire team's gone left and Major's gone right. The clock was ticking down on the 22nd clock, and I tried to get the, you know, I had to tell him to play real quick and get out to the line, and I ran up to the line, and I, and I, I knew it was an option, but I forgot which way it was. So I just started running, and, you know, I just kept running. <laughs> Here's Harris in trouble. Stiff arms, a would-be tackler. Comes down over the 25 to 20. Goes around about it to 15 to 10 to 5. A touchdown with Virginia. He did it. What a move he made on the first tackler. What a move he made on the second, on the third. And he gallops in for the touchdown. The most gorgeous run I had ever seen. And I'll never forget it because when he came off the field, he said, my, my fault, coach. 
I went the wrong way. I said, oh, don't worry about a major will except those kind of results. The magnificent run by Major Harris set the stage for an overwhelming triumph over Penn State. Halftime, the score was an unbelievable 41 to 8. On both offense and defense, West Virginia had ruled the entire game. Mountaineer fans could not have been happier. Heisman talk surrounded Major Harris. West Virginia was ranked fourth in the nation, undefeated, and headed into history. <laughs>